Good afternoon, everyone. Good to have you here. The government has a vision for Auckland as one of the great international cities. Uh, this is a place that is a point of connection for our country. It is New Zealand's economic powerhouse. We have a stunning natural environment, a diverse and vibrant population. And with the right policies, this can be a place in which all of our peoples thrive and prosper and have a strong sense of well-being. But one of the challenges that we all know that we face is that Auckland's transport system isn't up to the job. If we want to meet those objectives, we need a connected transport system that helps to move people and freight freely around our city. The government believes that the Auckland Light Rail project is an essential part of reaching this vision. The Auckland Transport Alignment Project, a cross-agency initiative between the government and Auckland Council, agrees that Auckland's future transport needs need to revolve around developing a mass transit system centred around light rail. Access to fast, frequent, reliable light rail has multiple benefits. It will increase public transport capacity, unlock the potential for Auckland to grow and for our city to intensify. It will also reduce transport emissions. Buses are already clogging our central city at peak times. Despite more public transport investment and infrastructure, we're at risk of it taking longer for people to use public transport to move around our cities unless we make decisive investments. Light rail also offers us an opportunity to make a steep change in emissions. A good rapid transit system like light rail gives people real transport choices, helping them to leave cars at home and to develop an urban form in which people do not need to use their cars to move around for work and recreation. Light rail will also support growth in Mangari, Onihanga, and Mount Roskill, and also connect our two largest and growing employment centres in the central city and to the north of Auckland Airport. Critically, light rail helps to create a central spine connecting Auckland's currently disconnected transport network. Put simply, without light rail and development towards a linked up mass transit system for our city, Auckland will choke on its own growth. There is a corridor of several hundred thousand people who currently don't have access to reliable rapid transit through the, the central part of the city, which has some of the fastest growing residential and jobs uh, areas. Buses alone in this corridor won't cut it for much longer. Light rail will help to create a vibrant, connected city that's easier, cleaner and safer to get around. The, the city centre Tamangari light rail project will be the backbone of a future rapid transit system that will eventually link to the north and northwest parts of the city forming a rapid transit network that fully integrates with other forms of transport across the city. The blueprint for this is laid out in ATAP. Today's announcement marks a fresh start for this important project for Tamaki Makaurau. I want to acknowledge that the process the government undertook last term was not good. It shut Aucklanders out of having their say about the city shaping project. There is wide ranging support for rapid transit, but Aucklanders did feel shut out by that project that process. Today I'm drawing a line under it and I'm uh, setting up a process which will involve Aucklanders from the get-go. As the new Transport Minister I've been tasked with getting the project back on track. Last year the Government received a very interesting letter from an extremely diverse group of Auckland stakeholders. These included the EMA, Bike Auckland, Greater Auckland, Generation Zero, the AA and Heart of the City all of whom said that they supported the concept of mass transit but wanted to have their say on the project and for the government to do a better job of involving communities and stakeholders. That is what we will now do. So what I'm confirming today is that the government is setting up an establishment unit with a six month work programme which is focused on firstly completing an indicative business case to enable decisions to be made on mode, route and providing cost estimate and funding and financing options. Partnering with Māori to support the project and move it forward, engaging with stakeholders and communities, and also determining the best form for a delivery entity. This will not be Waka Kotahi, but will either be the City Rail Link or a new joint venture with Auckland Council. The establishment unit will be a collaboration between central and local government. Housed within Waka Kotahi and drawing on expertise from a range of agencies including Auckland Transport, Auckland Council, the Ministry of Transport, Kayanga Ora and others. It will be governed by, governed by a unique and inclusive governance board involving an independent chair, key agencies, 
community and iwi Māori representation. Taking this inclusive approach allows for a strong focus on, on engagement, which is critical for getting the best outcome for Auckland. Involving Auckland Council is critical too. So the Mayor and Deputy Mayor of Auckland will work with me and the Minister of Finance as project sponsors to oversee this work. I know that some people would have liked me to have announced a shovel-ready project today, but I want to be absolutely certain that the plan that we move forward with is the right one for Auckland and that we involve Aucklanders in developing it. That's why this fresh start that involves working alongside Aucklanders on the city shaping project is so important. Today's announcement does mean that the community will help us in shaping the most significant city shaping project since the Auckland Harbour Bridge was built. I expect that the establishment unit will set up an office and be present in the community. They will be there to meet with stakeholders and communities, to hear ideas and seek feedback on the way ahead for this project. I know that there are several key stakeholders who are already keen to engage on an ongoing basis and provide advice on key decisions. The establishment unit will be the key avenue for them to do that. Cabinet will receive a report from the establishment unit in approximately six months, which will enable us to make key decisions on the future of the project, including the road, the, mo the, the, the mode, the route, the delivery entity and financing options. In coming weeks, I will make an announcement on the appointment of the independent chair who will lead this work and work with Aucklanders on this important city shaping project. Before I take questions, I have Alan MacDonald from the EMA here. The EMA, as I said, was one of the partners who wrote to the government last year requesting a different and more inclusive process for taking Auckland forward. And I'll just invite Alan to make a few comments on that point uh, before I take questions. Thanks, Minister. Um, I'd just like to endorse the, the process that the Minister's going, going through, as he made reference to uh, in his remarks. We're quite a, we were quite a disparate group. We're not natural bedfellows, cycle action and generation zero and the, the sort of business side of the community, but we were united in the concerns we had around that previous process. So it's really good to hear that A, the Minister has listened and is establishing that group to look at quite ra wide ranging steps, including the mode and the, the financing and the funding and the route, because I think there's still some contention around that. Uh, as a group, we all we share a common goal in decongesting Auckland's roads. We may not agree on the go on the pathway to that, but we agree on decongesting that because it's critical for business and for the lifestyle of Aucklanders. We don't want to be stuck in traffic. We're losing production. We funded a study a couple of years ago that showed it's 1.2 billion dollars that we lose every year, and it's probably nearer two now, if not more. So anything around mass transit, the alternative forms of public transport, active transport, that is going to help free up the freight task, and that's always overlooked or too often overlooked in many of these conversations, is the freight and getting around our city. We've got men in vans, the old man in the van economy, who lose one to two jobs a day because of congestion. So these sorts of projects, it'd be nice if it was shovel ready, but actually it's nice that they're taking the time to get it right. So thank you, Minister. Thank you, Alan. Thanks, everyone, and happy to take questions. Well, look, I think it's well known that we had a challenge in the last government in that we had partners in government who fundamentally didn't agree on this project. That did make it very different to progress uh, in that term of government. And then we had the twin track process. And look, fundamentally, I'm not looking back too much at that. I'm saying I'm drawing a line under it. I understand that it didn't engage Auckland as well. The best thing that I can do is now set up an inclusive engagement with Aucklanders. Well, look, no one is keener to progress this progress as quickly as possible as, than I am as a, a person who lives in Auckland, who experiences the challenges of traffic every day that I'm here, uh, who lives in the area, who represents the area. I want to see this project move forward, but we do have to take a little bit of time up front to engage with people and get it right. As I said before, this will be the most significant city shaping project since the Auckland Harbour Bridge. We need to partner up with Auckland Council, with key community groups and stakeholders to get it right. Is it actually going to happen? Yes. So when, you, when, when would it start? 
Really well, as I've said, what we can commit to today is this first phase of work, and that will produce an indicative business case that means that we can make firm decisions and then move into a delivery entity commencing the work. We intend to make those decisions by the end of this year, and at that point that entity will be able to start doing the detailed business case work, engaging with the market and developing a clearer timeline for implementation. You can appreciate the public a little bit weary because it feels like we've had this conversation before. What is different about this commitment, this promise that you're making? Well, as of 2020, we have a government with a clear mandate to deliver on the commitments that we have made. As I said in the last term, it's well known that we had parties in government who didn't agree on this project. That made it hard to progress. This government had a clear manifesto commitment to progress this project, and that's what we're doing. Look, that work has to be done. That's not a question that I can answer today, but we're setting up the process to make sure that we make the right decisions. We'll have a delivery entity moving into the next phase of this project by the end of this year, and they will be able to start shaping up that timeline. But we will be moving forward with this project as quickly as we can, ensuring that we make good decisions, given the scale of it and the impact on Auckland's transport system. Even, even Look, I'm not going to predetermine those questions. The whole point of this process is that the establishment unit engages with stakeholders in the communities of Auckland to determine them. We're not starting with a blank sheet of paper. Uh, there has been a significant amount of work done on this project already uh, by Auckland Council, Auckland Transport and Waka Kotahi. So we'll be drawing on their work, we'll be drawing on the expertise within those organisations. And there are clearly some choices when it comes to route, when it comes to mode, and when it comes to delivery entity. So it's going to be about a engagement around those specific choices rather than inventing something from the ground up. But would you like to see an option that goes directly to the airport rather than to Well, look, one of the things I'll say about this project is that it needs to be understood in terms of the broader ambition and objective, which is about developing a linked up rapid transit system for Auckland. So yes, it connects the city centre and the airport, but it's not about just about a point-to-point -point journey between those two points. It's about connecting into the rest of the current and emergent rapid transit network, and it's about being a spine for the development of a broader rapid transit network, thinking about the North West, thinking about the North Shore. So those, that's the focus that we need to have as we develop it. We've got clear outcomes that we're going to ask the establishment unit to work to, and their job will be to develop up the best options to meet those outcomes around access, around integration to the network, around improving environmental outcomes and good value for money. Is there a reason, though, that your statement doesn't mention the word airport? Uh, the Mayor does. He talks about the airport precinct, but yours is all about money. Are you thinking this might not end up going to the airport, but ending somewhere else and that you're changing to another mode? No, the, the, the intention is that the route does reach the airport. Uh, probably the reason for the way that I've described it is, is as I've just said, we conceptualise this as a project that is more than just about a point-to-point -point journey from the city centre to the airport. And I think perhaps in the past we over-relied on that as an explanation for why we wanted to make this investment. We're clearly saying to Aucklanders that this is not an isolated project, it's about building a linked-up public transport network for Aucklanders to be able to move around their city freely to deal with those challenges that Alan mentioned. So that perhaps describes the, 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 the difference in uh, the, the words that we're using, but just to take any doubt out of the debate, the intention is that this route uh, will connect at either ends to the central city network and to Auckland Airport. The Mayor also says that, which is a phrase I don't think you use, this is fully funded by a central government. <laughs> He's obviously making a distinction from CRL. Yeah. The, look, look, at this stage there is a $1.8 billion allocation of seed funding with an ATAP. Uh, we, what we need to do through the indicative business case process that the establishment unit will lead is to shape up what the actual options are that we proceed with and then we, then we can determine what the funding allocation needs to be. We can't determine the funding allocation until we have answered those questions. Now the establishment unit will give the government advice on that as part of its indicative business case at the end of the year. We've asked them to give us advice on different funding options and specifically asked them to consider options such as value capture so that we're looking at the, the different ways in which we can fund what will be a very significant project. But we can't rule out ratepayers also paying? Well, one way or the other, um, we all end up paying for a significant project like this, as we do with all transport infrastructure. Are you sure there could be private, some sort of private partnership as well? 
Uh, well, what the government said at the point that we ended the twin track process in July of last year is that we'll proceed with this process uh, as a public service delivery model. Um, so we won't be looking to a process um, similar to what we had uh, last time, uh, where we have a public-private partnership. But obviously, as we move into it, we'll explore the options that we can have within a public service delivery model. Where does this sit in the government's ranking of transport priorities? This is one of the most significant transport priorities for Auckland. Uh, that's why we're so focused on it. The previous work that you're now drawing a line under, how much was spent on that or not? Oh, look, I'd have to get back to you about that. I don't have that figure with me right. today. No, I just don't have that with me. Has it been a waste of time for years prior and the work that's been done up until now? No, because we'll be able to draw on that work within this process. I could take the point you're making. There's a degree of frustration about that process. I've said that we draw a line under it. But the work that has been done, particularly by Auckland Council, Auckland Transport and Waka Kotahi, is relevant to the work that we will do now. It's relevant to the engagement that we'll have with Aucklanders. And what I think we can achieve through this process is to have some real openness. The, the frustration that I've sensed from people, and Alan and the, the other organisations have reflected this to me, is that people have had a sense that something's going on, there's work that's been happening, but they haven't really understood what it is, what its objectives are, what the trade-offs and options are. The intention of this establishment unit is it will bring this information into the light for Aucklanders to understand and have their say on so that we can make good decisions. You've been blaming New Zealand first, but Labour, does your government take responsibility for, for Labour to get this off the tracks? Well, look, the reality of the last um, government is that with a project like this, you, you would by definition have needed the support of both coalition partners, and that was clearly not there. But look, we have to take responsibility for the fact that the previous process did have its failings, and I've been uh, pretty clear about that today. As a new minister, my job is to focus on what we do now, and that's what I'm outlining. So Phil's wife has failed? No, that's not what I'm saying at all. You keep saying that this is the biggest city shaping project since the British. That kind of leapfrogs the city rail link, which is $4.4 billion. Are you suggesting this will be more costly than $4.4 billion? Well, as I say, we haven't determined what the final cost will be. That will, that will depend on the options that come through from the indicative business case, and I'll be able to comment on that at that stage. There's no doubt that it will be a very significant uh, investment, and the way that I think about it is this. If uh, we were starting from scratch in 2021 with our roading network, and we plan to build a motorway network between the central city and Mangere, everyone would expect that that would be a multi-billion dollar project. We will be looking at a project of a similar scale in this case. The reality is this is about planning for Auckland's transport needs for our urban growth over the next 100 years. So it will be a significant spend, but we'll need to, need to make those decisions about the shape of the project before we can be more specific about exactly how much. Might this group go on to look at the North West uh, line and might rail possibilities up there? Have these experts together? Is it sensible or is it just too distant? Look, I'm open to how we progress that piece of work. We're giving this establishment unit a very specific task, and I do want them to be focused on that. The six-month time frame that we have given them is an ambitious time frame for this piece of work, given the scale of the decision-making and the analysis that they will have to undertake. So we will be asking them to focus upon that. But beyond that, as I said, this is about a broader vision for rapid transit in Auckland. We will need to be doing further work on that. Waka Kotahi are already significantly advanced in developing what a future rapid transit network for the city looks like. Auckland Transport have been working on that as well. One of my objectives over the next year or so is to make sure that we're bringing together the integrated planning, and I've been talking with Minister Woods and other key ministers about this, around our future transport needs, our future housing needs, our future infrastructure needs, so that we develop a linked up plan for Auckland. And that work has quite a lot of focus at the moment. You'll be aware that this is the second big policy initiative the government's announced today, which it basically announced a working group. You know, and yours didn't even have a chairman. Um, is that enough? Look, this is a very, very significant project. Aucklanders have asked us to come back and engage with them. Under the previous process, we didn't have Auckland Council at the table, we didn't have Auckland Transport at the table, we didn't have stakeholders at the table. People want us to do this work alongside them now. It can't be Wellington imposing a solution on Auckland, so I think it's a critical phase. And this, this is, it's a meaningful process. This will give us a clear steer as to the decisions that we need to make on this project. Oh, we're just simply working through that process at the moment. I, I'm very clear that in this process, I want us to be following transparent and appropriate processes. 
uh, Cabinet uh, signed off on the, the way ahead for this project uh, on Monday of this week. Uh, we couldn't have moved forward with the appointment of a chair before that point. We're working on that now and I expect to make an announcement in a matter of weeks rather than months. Oh, look, that's a, it's entirely a decision from them as to whether they wish to engage in it. I've got no doubt that we, when we get to engaging with the market, there will be many partners um, who want to be involved with this project. It's a decision for them, and I do note that they've indicated their interest in being involved in other projects in the transport and infrastructure space. Coming back to Tim's earlier questions about funding, public funding, you don't appear to be ruling out um, funding well, look, that is simply something that we haven't explored at this stage. Everyone's aware that Auckland Council faces significant funding challenges at the moment. The COVID environment hasn't helped with that. They've had a range of significant capital investments, which means that they're right up against their debt buffer. But look, it's a, it's a conversation that we'll continue to have. That the point I'd make in this project is that from the outset, we're making sure that Auckland Council are at the table. Uh, the Mayor and the Deputy Mayor will be uh, co-project sponsors alongside myself and the Minister of Finance. So we're there and we're able to have the whole set of conversations around all of the issues, including funding. There's, no, there's not an indication on the t table at the moment that they will come forward with funding, but we'll keep the conversation going. But, um, I mean, they're bound to get, get involved financially in some way or another. I mean, if it comes to connecting sort of the transport networks together, there's bound to be a cost there for the Auckland Road Trail as well. Well, look, um, there are probably, probably two separate questions in there. There's a funding question around the capital needs of the project. And then there'll be a funding question and a network integration question about how the network operates and how it connects into the rest of the public transport network. Uh, I've, been, I've been very clear, and this will come through in the, the Cabinet paper that we'll be releasing shortly, that I want to make sure that in the operational phase there ultimately is public ownership and control of the network. And by definition that means that Auckland Council and Auckland Transport need to play a role there. But we'll just need to work that through carefully with them to make sure that it's sustainable. Well, look, I hope not. I think that <laughs> Aucklanders across the city, across the region, in fact, recognise the need for investment in a quality rapid transit system. People know that our growth is significant. They know that we're choking on it now and that it's only going to get worse if we don't make these investments. And I must say, I've had a lot of engagement across with Auckland Council across political boundaries as we've been working towards this announcement. And my sense is that there is strong support um, across you know, a broad sweep of councillors, local board members and other people who are prepared to put Auckland first above party politics. I hope that others do as well. Is there a, just going back to the airport end of it, is there a reason the airport company is not involved in that um, group? Oh, look, we will certainly be engaging uh, with Auckland Airport. Um, the establishment unit um, is the, the body that will have governance over this particular piece of work, but we absolutely expect that the governance, the establishment unit itself will then engage through formal and informal means with all of the other key stakeholders. Uh, those that I've mentioned today, clearly the Auckland International Airport is one of the key stakeholders uh, as one of the locations at which we will have a station and we will need to, need to access their land. Um, I've had uh, conversations with Auckland Airport over recent months. They're keen to get some certainty around this project. I'm sure they'll be keen to, be, to engage with it. Uh, at, at what point do you mean? Uh, well, when you know, the idea of light rail was uh, going to get off the ground in the first place. Yeah. Well, look, I, I, I can't speak too much on, uh, on that because I wasn't there at the time. Um, obviously, by about 2018, we got into the twin track process. That arose because there was an unsolicited bid from NZ Infra, and we entered into that process because that seemed to be the best way of dealing with it at the time. I, I couldn't speak to why an establishment unit uh, wasn't uh, set in place at that time. I suppose what I would say is that, you know, you, you learn things as you go along. And I think as a government, we have learned that that process was deficient in terms of its engagement with people in Auckland. And that's led us to the conclusion that an open, consultative process like this, but time bound, is the best way of moving forward. Would that mean that it would have to follow on from when that project was finished? No, not necessarily. And uh, you know, the, currently the CRL is 
projected to conclude the construction, that is, by about the end of 2024. It would certainly be my hope uh, that this project was well underway by that stage. But that's something we'll have to work through. And one of the reasons that we have said to the establishment unit there are two options here, the CRL or some kind of new joint venture, is because we need to examine that. Clearly the CRL is a high performing organisation, it has a good governance uh, set up, it has significant expertise, a set of relationships around Auckland and um, some capacity that potentially is very transferable to this project as well. But we need to understand what their capacity to take something else would be. We don't want to disrupt their important work on the CRL project itself. And this period of six months and the work that we're doing gives us the opportunity to examine that and come to a good conclusion. Is this, um, this process that you're going through now, is this a one-off for this particular project or is it how the government will do more of these sort of major project consultations from here on in? At this point, this is a bespoke process for Auckland Light Rail but I wouldn't rule, us, rule out us looking at similarly consultative processes for future projects. Can I grab Alan quickly? Do you want to be grabbed, Alan? <laughs> Do you have a preferred route through it? Uh, no. Uh, it, that corridor is a logical corridor, but it's depending on which part of the, which road you, you put it down. We're, we're kind of neutral on that. Dominion Road has its challenges, obviously. So does Sandringham, so does Mount Eden Road. They, they've all got their challenges. <coughs> um, what we'd like to see is whatever corridor they land on, it's a better job than what happened with Albert Street and the, the huge impact on businesses there. I think there's a lot to be learned from that. Um, and it's interesting to hear the Minister talk about the 1.8 billion seed funding. If you adopted a model that's been done overseas, for example, where you actually buy all those businesses along those corridors could work out cheaper in the long run than the process we've had to go through. So that's something I think will probably come into consideration in the funding. So no, don't have a, a view on the route as long as it's done properly, not the least. Are businesses worried about the disruption? Absolutely. Calls yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, we've been fielding calls from members in that corridor. Um, if hearing now that it, the corridor is still up for grabs, if you like, that will throw more uncertainty to those on those other main thoroughfares down there. So good that there's a six month process around this, getting it done fairly quickly to give them some certainty. And, and quite pleased that it's quite wide ranging looking at the route, the modes, the funding and the other pieces there. You know, arguably if this had been done three years ago, might have been closer to a, um, a shovel ready announcement today. Who knows? But these things always take time. It took 25 years to do the Waterview Tunnel. Because it makes it hard for businesses to look at investing more than yep. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, you look at Dominion Road and what's changed down there in the last, well, you, you're a resident, you've seen it more than I have, but that whole business mix down there has changed quite dramatically in the last 10 years. Uh, with the plans now that you have that allow more dense housing, that, cha that will certainly change how Dominion Road or whichever corridor gets chosen will look in the future. So there's those, those implications to come in there as well because I think it's five or seven storeys that's allowed down there now and that ripples back from the houses that are you know, one and two streets back and all that sort of thing. So it does create a lot of uncertainty. Uh, I think that the kind of time frame, six months, is kind of lightning speed for councils and governments to move at. So we look forward to seeing them moving at lightning speed. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice job, Alan. Can I, can I just pick up on, on that point a bit further? The reality down Dominion Road, as part of my electorate, is that there's been uncertainty for at least 10 years. That, that's about how long. There has been discussion of some nature about this project. Auckland uh, Council uh, mooted this project. In fact, Auckland City mooted this project pre-amalgamation in 2010. And that, to some degree, has inhibited development along that corridor already. What we hope we can give people through this process is some certainty about the decision-making uh, process and time frame. The other thing that I would say is that I'm very conscious of that business disruption issue, so that's why we've had engagement with the EMA. I've met this morning with Gary Holmes from the Dominion Road Business Association to make sure that we're having early conversations about that. And I'm of a view that we do have to deal with that issue as part of the indicative business case process. These are significant projects. They potentially create disruption over a longer period of time than the sort of business as usual processes that we have. So while we don't want to set precedents that every time there's a, a little bit of roadworks, these compensation payments, I want us to seriously look at that. And that's something I'll be asking uh, the establishment unit to consider and provide us advice on. Do you have any ideological opposition to 
not an ideological opposition. We'll simply need to work through what the best model is for the project and the fairest model is for the people who are involved. So you mentioned value capture as being an element possibly of funding. Does that suggest tunnelling underneath some property which is in beyond fold above? Or? No, I wouldn't necessarily link those two things. You know, the, the, the nature and the, the international evidence on this is extremely clear that rapid transit networks of this kind significantly increase the economic value of the surrounding land, like significantly. And so it is a reasonable question to ask that if private property holders along that route are experiencing an economic uplift as a result of this public investment, should they be making a contributory share to that? We need to explore that. We haven't had a, a, a similar scheme operating in New Zealand to date, so you know, we approach that with a bit of caution and care, but it is clearly one of the options to look at for supporting this project. Um, it's unlikely to be the major funding component of a project of this scale, but in terms of equity uh, and in terms of supporting the funding need, it could well be a useful tool. Anyone else there? Okay. Thank you, everyone. Have a good afternoon.